did you do it in the event? No. No, I said go ahead and put up the link. That's what I meant to say. Oh, okay. I don't have it. Oh. I need to get it. I get, oh, the other, yeah, the other link. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Not that left, your other left. <laughs> right. <laughs> There we go. There it is. Okay. Interesting point you made, Don, about uh, the difference between First and Second Peter. Because when, yeah. when I was looking under all the different commentaries for it, a lot of the commentaries don't think that they are the same person because they are so different. In other words, the the way that he handles himself in Second Peter, even with the uh, order of his words and his placement and everything is so it's so different that most scholars think that two different people wrote the two different epistles. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And uh, it's interesting. Bollinger wasn't one of them. Bollinger thinks Peter wrote both of them. Same yeah. person wrote both of them. It's really cool that. How you brought up the Hebrew and the Greek, and then and the Hebrew, uh, the Old Testament, that forgiveness was never mentioned. And the first time that it was is when Jesus Christ was healing the man that was uh, brought down through the roof, and everybody did go a little ballistic. So anyway, I thought that was really wonderful to hear the first time that it was mentioned and what all has been given to us through Christ. Yeah, it is something, you know, you watch these movies that they make, like that movie, The Bible, they never really depict these things very well. Yeah. But you lay They out suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that reminds me. The other day I rented Noah. Oh, I stopped about halfway through it and returned it. Yeah, right. I yeah. was so dis. Oh gosh. In fact, it. I was right on the edge of being infuriated, so I had to quit watching it. I don't know if you've heard of it. Which one? Uh, Noah. 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 Oh, yeah. Uh, every the time I think about it, it pisses me off. <laughs> about the only thing correct in that movie is the guy's name. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just, wait. Just wait until you, um. well, if you have the stomach for it, just out of curiosity, just wait until you watch Exodus. They have a... They Both have of which are... Both of which are available on Netflix right now. Oh yeah, <laughs> I wish I knew that before I wasted money on it. <laughs> just oh wow, it was just I, Exodus one man. I was like, like at, at first, at first it was okay. I think it was, I think it was better than Noah because Noah like started off with with evolution even okay, um, but. But Exodus, you know, it was okay. I was just like, okay, I can dig this. I know, I know there's different perspectives on how people like to, you know, kind of tell the story. So, all right, whatever. Nothing was really, like, horribly out and outright bad about it in the beginning of the movie. But, like, but then, like, halfway on, wow, I couldn't believe it. Like, I was just like, I am so glad my kids fell asleep. During the movie, I was like, "This is so horrible." Uh, I mean, it was when um, you know, like uh, the the Egyptians when they went to go chase when they were chasing after Moses, um, like you know, like there's different little stories and movies and stuff, but in this one, Exodus, the new one, somehow they had it where they fell off a cliff. Like, like they were chasing after him, and then like somehow the cliff was was 
I don't know. Somehow they were falling off the cliff because they were like so arrogant with chasing after him or something like that. And I was like, wow, how much more blatantly off the Bible could you possibly be? I don't know. <laughs> like, where is it? Where are they falling off a cliff? You know, like, where is this at? Um, I mean, there's some things that I can deal with being open to imagination, but when it's just so completely like not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Not what the, it's just. Oh, it was hard. It was hard for me to watch. I mean, I watched purely out of curiosity, just to just to see how much more wrong it could possibly get. <laughs> but oh man, it was it was yeah, not uplifting. That was a bummer. Seeing so many clips <laughs> of so many movies um, about Christ, and then when uh, they came out with Passion of the Christ, I thought that that was really beautiful because, you know, if nothing else, they showed the torture that he went through, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, and and I was. I still am very moved by that movie uh, because it is his passion and love for us. And mm -hmm. there's another movie out now that's called, I think it's called Do You Believe? And I've heard some very good things about it, but I have not seen it yet. But, you know, have you, you can see this movie gone yeah. everywhere and, you know, and, and, and movies. One of the first movies that I saw after I was born again as a young believer uh, was It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I saw that as, you know, how important each and every believer is. And I cried and bawled and I mean, and I watched it with a bunch of believers and, you know, if you want to see God, you can see him everywhere. So, you know, uh, Star Wars, baby. The Force be with you. <laughs> yeah. You know, about It's a Wonderful Life, there's an interesting thing I've noticed in that movie. When Jimmy Stewart's praying to get his life back, and he's there, God, you know, I, Clarence, I need this. Clarence, I need that. Please give me back my life. And he fin finally says, God... Let me have my life back. And that's when it starts snowing. Yeah, well, I don't think I've watched it again in years, but sitting yeah, down yeah. watching that 30 years ago with a room full of believers, that was really a, a beautiful thing I'll always remember because we were all there. And, and uh, like I said, if you want to see God, you can see him in everything. Yeah. You can either see him every place or miss him every place. Yeah, so it's it's wonderful to have the opportunity to to know this truth and for God to care and love us all so much that He entrusts us with it, so that when we see, you know, His Word wrongly divided, it does it it upsets us deeply because that's not our God. Our God is a loving God, and He's you know, full of love and truth. And somebody was talking about that on Facebook today. Um, I forget what the, they asked this question about. What do you? How do you feel if uh, somebody is misquoting scriptures and doesn't want to listen and all this stuff? And I said, I don't waste my time with them. Yeah. You know, if if they if they really don't want to know the truth, if they don't want to know the scriptures, and you've you've actually tried to give it to them, then at a certain point you just got to shake the dust off your feet and move on. Yeah. Well, some people have tried giving a. Well, and well, to me, I have to. I think that we need to be very careful not to be hypocritical. Um, just because, I mean, when, well, I understand shaking the dust off your feet thing, but at the same time, when, like, let's just say somebody was trying to give me a whole bunch of scripture that Jesus is God, right? You know, because, or how the Trinity, you know, the Trinity is true, right? All these, all these scriptures to prove that the Trinity is true. 
um, a lot of Trinitarians will feel like when they give me a whole bunch of their scriptures and I, you know, I'll try to give them the explanations from one God and one Lord and whatnot, but because they're not willing to look at the explanations, they just say, they use that whole shake off the dust thing on me because they, oh, well, I gave you scripture. And, you know, if you don't see it, then, you know, I'm just going to shake off the dust. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I want to be careful not to, like, use that towards people that just need a little bit more discussion or a little bit more time to, to, oh, to see. I, yeah. I agree with you there. You can't just, you know, blow everybody off because if, yeah. if you did that, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know you guys wouldn't do that. I mean, you guys put up with me, okay? So I know you guys don't do that. But, I mean, I was just letting it out there that, uh, yeah, I mean, some, some people can be rude about it. And, you know, it's like, okay, shake the dust off that. But if, they're, if people are not being rude, they're just not seeing it yet. You know what I mean? And there's so many areas of the ward that you can go to that you can come to, uh, you know, common ground. You know, being united. So, mm -hmm. like with my family, they're you know they're definitely Trinitarians, and um, I have just learned with them when they start that I just change the subject to something else that we can talk about that we both agree on instead of mm -hmm. spending time arguing mm -hmm. or you know having different discussions because you know it's. It's just not worth it. It's more worth it to love people and let that Christ in you shine so that one day they will think, well, wow, you know, how did they really live their life? And is it showing? And um, Not me. When I get involved, I like to fight. <laughs> I can see that. Hey, seriously, something you brought up, Chandra, about and I think we do this, and I think we've talked about it before, is we're so anxious to witness the truth that we've learned that we overwhelm people. And something that was brought up, and I think Franco brought it up in one of the meetings or something, somebody, but throw, a, throw something out. Throw something out and see if they fight. Not, not a whole line of scripture or a whole book or a whole idea, just something. <laughs> And I don't think that any uh, any of us can do anything without operating the, the gift that we have, without operating manifestations. If you're not in tune to where you're getting knowledge and wisdom from the Lord Jesus Christ on every particular circumstance, then you're not going, because he's the one that adds to the church. He's the one that told Paul, don't go there. Paul was in tune. He's the one who told Paul, go to Macedonia. Paul saw the vision of the guy saying, hey, I'm over here. I want to hear the word. Uh, he's the one who told him to stay in Corinth because I have many. But he was looking to that. And I think that we, in our own arrogance, leave that off the same way that Adam and Eve did. I think we say, take a seat, Lord. I got it. And <laughs> heal our guts and we... And, and we get, or we start getting a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of wisdom via the new life we have, and then we think we have it. And, and as long as we stay humble before Jesus, and go, I mean, I'm trying to get better before my life ends, of at least saying, okay, Lord, what is the best thing to do with this person I have in front of me? And I, I mean, that really works. And if it's Shake them off, they ain't there, then shake them off, they ain't there. Uh, throw them a nibble. It, it's just, it, it's, you can't underestimate operating that gift all nine, all the time. It's, um, it's like your favorite candy bar is a payday. And you're so excited, you love those paydays. So, What's the first thing you want to do? You want to share it with somebody. And so you say, here, look, you got to taste this payday. Somebody goes, I hate paydays. Yeah, and you go, how can you hate a payday? Uh, <laughs> try it. Take a bite. 
Maybe you'll like it. If you guys write this stuff down, I'm going to be very mad at you. <laughs> what? Okay, I could have used the snicker. It could have been, maybe that been... Um, there's not a candy bar you couldn't use on me to get me to come. You held a candy bar up, baby. I'm yours. I'll believe anything. <laughs> <laughs> baby Ruth, better see you. What else? What else is there? The heat Reese's bottle. peanut butter cups. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Twix. Mm. Anyways. <laughs> like, anyways. Zeros. Um, they still sell those, too. Oh, zero. Um, I wanted to... I, I put my notes and stuff into the Google Plus event, by the way, so that way I could, like, bring it up here on the, you know, comment tracker. <laughs> it's kind of like, here's my notes, <laughs> and you guys get to look at my notes. <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to bring up... When it came part in the teaching that you were talking about sinners, Jesus hanging out with sinners and stuff... I wanted to tell you about, <laughs> yeah, I don't have a problem hanging out with them. I think they have a problem hanging out with me because, I, I mean, well, you know, because I've already, I've already lost two, you know, good, I mean, two friendships that were like my, I considered them my best friends, but I've already lost connections with them. I, it's like I've burned those bridges, like not meaning to, but it's just, they like it's that unevenly yoked thing, you know, or mm -hmm. like when you don't with I'm not trying to be arrogant here, I'm at all. I'm just saying that whole part in the Bible or you know, the light having in common with darkness kind of thing. It's it's not that I don't want to um even, even be hang out with them and talk to them and catch up with them. I still want to do that. But they're kinda of giving me the cold shoulder. Like they don't want to talk to me and um it's sad. It breaks my heart, but yeah. yeah I mean, I'm, when I first got in the Word, uh -huh. I didn't see or hear from my family for ten years. Ten wow. years. And at at times, yeah, that would make me sad. But I looked at so much I had gained. Yeah. In, in my new life, putting the past behind me, reaching forward, looking for the mark. I had all these sisters and brothers that truly loved me and loved God way more, you know. So yeah. um, sometimes I felt like Job when I lost. God gave me tenfold back, you know. Yeah. And yeah. so many areas. So um, yeah, I, I still desire for a lot of them to know the truth. But like I said before, it's, your life will tell this story. Mm -hmm. Amen, sister. They, they still think we're weird, but every time they need prayed for, they come to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? Yeah, it is. It's true. It is. Hey, something else I want to bring up about the teaching before we run out of time, Don, is uh, the, uh, the illustration that you gave concerning... Uh, uh, the, the relationship between Peter and uh, Romans. I, I'm going to do something, and I hope I can do it this weekend. I'm <laughs> because you, it seems like you can read First Peter, and then start reading Romans, and it's like a continued revelation. Even the words, it's almost like Paul copied Peter's writing and then added new information to it. Yeah. The, the words are <laughs> similar. It's off the chart. I mean, it's 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 too off the chart for that not to have been done one way or the other. I think, of course, from Peter to Romans. But uh, uh, I, I've got I had this thought when you were because you know I've been working this stuff. But I'm going to read. I want to read the four Gospels. Then I want to read the Book of Revelation because I know you can literally leave off where John leaves off and keep on reading in the book of Revelation, and it would be what everything in the Hebrew Scripture says. It, you could leave all the epistles out. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the four Gospels, the book of Revelation, and I'm going to read the Bible backwards through the epistles from the book of Revelation. Uh, uh, 
I really think it's significant because of the way things are unveiled. Uh, I mean, the order to the scriptures of the Pelagian epistles have never been changed in any manuscript that we have available to us. They're always Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians 1 and 2, um, Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. But the other ones are all over the place, and even there's some books that weren't added and, and stuff like that. But with what we talk about today, I'm going to read it backwards. Because I know that Thessalonians was one of the first epistles that Paul wrote, actually, yeah. from, a, from a chronological standpoint. And I, I just see a revelation there as far as what they, the book of Acts being run through that I never actually saw that big before. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Um, I remember Dr. Werrell teaching that you know Thessalonians was the first book lost. And he said it was because they lost sight of the hope and preparation for the um, for death became we started to replace the hope and that really just flows right in with everything I mean because people started going back to the Hellenistic points of view you know uh, the whole that whole thing about uh, hell and Hellfire and all that that whole thing that they talk about and not uh, are the are the are the dead living or whatever the what's the title of that book I can't remember it. Are the dead alive now? No, not that one. The other one. Is there death after life? After life, right? You know, it, it, it talks about that. You know that it all just the hope got lost. And it was the first thing that got lost. Yeah. And that that was part of the problem. Once they lost sight of the hope, there was nothing worth it wasn't worth it anymore. And tomorrow night at seven o'clock Eastern or yeah, Eastern time. I can't remember what time I'm on now. Uh, the Hope. Evening Fellowship, WebEx. Look it up. Be there or be square. <laughs> It's always interesting to see how the word fits. We lost it's, Chandra. Hmm? We lost Chandra. Uh oh, she fell out of fellowship again. <laughs> She's backsliding. Yeah. Well, maybe she'll come back. So we got Alan next week, huh? Right, Alan, you're up next week. Sounds good. The Roman. <laughs> Roman about Romans. So much fun. Well, has anybody got anything else to say, or should we just call it a night? Yeah, I got something to Whoa. say. Oh, yeah. Go for it. It was a beautiful teaching, Don. Thank you so much. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. I mean, God just put it on my heart, so I had to go with it. You laid it out very, very, very nice. I wish, you know, there's so many things in there that we can't really cover in, the, in a fellowship like this. Like the thing about, um, I don't remember reading it, but maybe we did. The thing about... Um, Jesus Christ witnessing to the imprisoned spirits. There, that's a whole four or five hours right there that you could do. I mean, Mike, you know as much about that as anybody. How long do you think you could teach on that subject alone? Oh man, I mean, all the way. We could start in Romans chapters or uh, uh, Genesis chapter Genesis. six, and work our way all the way to Jude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's just, it is an unknown subject, basically. Yeah. I, I first heard mm -hmm. about it in the advanced class, and then Bob Wassong has done a lot of work on it, I know. I want to get through that again, because I, I, I heard it once, but I really want to sit through it again. Yeah, yeah that's, that's good stuff. 
Yeah, his tape is he's got that online that uh, at the at the website, uh, and he really uh, he does that B'nai Elohim teaching the son <clears throat> the sons of God, God's God and sons of God is the title of it, and I think it's a two part teaching that is in his archives. It's one of the very first ones. Not the first one, but it's one of the very first ones that he did when he started the uh, uh, Wednesday night uh, research night, and it is it opened up the Hebrew scriptures to me like I've never had them open before. When I read the Hebrew scriptures now, I see more than I I ever have in my uh, 40 years of being in the Word. I just it's it's just his insight was just really, really cool. It makes the Old Testament make sense. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, Finally. Uh, the, our, our fellowship leader in Manhattan, she's been studying uh, with a bunch of rabbis the uh, Hebrew scriptures. And mm. she's brought up a lot of things from a Jewish point of view and or you know, just looking at things and understanding it from a Jewish perspective, it makes the whole thing live. Just you know, Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, a lot of people think it was just because of the debauchery. It was also because God wanted. It talks a lot about hospitality, and they didn't want people to move to Sodom and Gomorrah because. Sodom and Gomorrah were wealthy, very wealthy cities, and they didn't want any more people coming in and taking away their wealth. So they were very unkind to people. And, you know, there's two reasons men rape men. One, they're homosexuals, or one, two, they're trying to... What's the word? They're trying to... Dominate. Insult, insult. Yeah, that's it's a way of humili humiliation. That's the word I'm looking for. Humiliate, it's a yeah. way to humiliate, and that's why there's the Jewish belief is just that that the um, when the city gathered outside of Lot's door, they wanted to humiliate the the two angels so that they would not want to move into Sodom. Or Gamora, and that was part of why they were there. And you don't get that from most Christian preachers. No, I think wasn't what, and I and I heard this a long time ago. Wasn't I mean? Isn't it taught that that when the Romans hung people on the cross that they were naked too? They didn't have any clothes on. It was part of the humiliation of the cross. Oh, uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard that. I can't remember where I. I know they were. They were gambling for Jesus's coat. Mm -hmm. Cut it up and, you know, that's another thing. If he was so poor, why were they, why were they gambling for rags? Good point. Excellent point. Also, they only wore two garments, a, a coat and a cloak. That's what makes it so hilarious when uh, Jesus Christ said, if a person asks for your coat, give him your cloak also, because that you'd be standing there naked. <laughs> That's all they wore. <laughs> right. There were so many revolutionary ideas that Jesus Christ presented. I can understand to some degree why the Pharisees were so shocked with him. Yeah. yeah. But you know, he just had this greater understanding of the word than they they could possibly have because they they just couldn't they just couldn't you know grasp it with their little minds. Yeah, we need to push Wassong because I've I've been looking into it, but I haven't had time to study it. But he from his learnings, uh, he believes that, that that's exactly what Jesus Christ was in training to be, 
that's part of the significant part of him being there when he was 12 and going through that time period with that extra year uh, that he was being trained. He was not being trained. He was trained as a Pharisee. That's why he was so hard on the Pharisees because his, and his teachings, the Pharisees compared to the Sadducees were were in were up against each other a lot because of the beliefs. But Jesus Christ speaks as a Pharisee, but and he criticizes them for not looking at the heart of the law that they were preaching. And uh, and 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 Bob has said that he's going to teach on it sometime soon. And I'm really kind of looking forward to that to get some good notes on that because as much as since it's been mentioned, I read about it and I see it, I don't have enough uh, in-depth knowledge about the history and everything to put it together. So I'm really... I'm a... Yeah. I can see that he would be raised as a Pharisee because, you know, most people don't know about the culture and how, how children were raised. They were particularly raised by their grandparents. The grandparents were... In <sighs> basically in charge of watching over the kids and they were the ones that would teach the kids the word because they had the more they had the most knowledge of the word first off so they would start teaching the kids it wasn't you know the parents and then the parents would reinforce it at night when they were home but don't forget the father was usually out working doing something either doing some carpentry or fishing or something. And they were very prominent because it, and it goes along with the part of the backup to that is the way, when he went into Galilee and the opening of his ministry in Luke chapter 4, he would have had to have, he, he was opening his ministry. And the mere fact that he was able to call out disciples is because he was opening his pharisaic ministry. Uh, along with that, having a uh, uncle that was a, a high priest, we you know John the Baptist's father was the high priest the year that uh, Elizabeth was right. I mean, these people were very, very, very much involved in the hierarchy of the Jewish religion of that time. Their, their families were heavily involved. They were... They were a big part of it. Well, just remember, these guys prayed six times a day. Right. I mean, the hours of prayer, they were praying six times. There, it's a whole different mindset that they had than we have. <clears throat> That's why you have to have some understanding of the culture <clears throat> just to put the word together. Right. They only parade six times a day. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got the band together and went do 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 do. do. <laughs> Dude, we can pray all day long. Hey man, I'm an S I T fool. <laughs> they were <laughs> limiting God by only praying six times a day. <laughs> Down in Texas, we call it T I T. <laughs> we we talk it in tongues. <laughs> we talk it in tongues. <laughs> I remember that. We're gonna have TIT written everywhere. <laughs> hey, have you have you had your tit for the day? <laughs> uh, that might not sell. <laughs> yeah, that that might be hard. Well, that's hard, okay. Hard, hard job. It's like he doesn't sell either. <laughs> there was a comedian in Houston back in the 80s when Dan and I were first uh, married. And Mrs. Worrell was here, and it was a big gathering down in Houston. And... He he, that was one of his jokes. He was making fun of talking in tongues because he was a hillbilly and he was talking in tongues, and he he went through that illustration. But he gave some of the most beautiful 
uh, I would call them way jokes at that time because they were making fun of us. And, you know, the the, mo the best humor is making fun of yourself. But he had one. i got to share this one before we go because it's short. It was about Moses and the children from Israel. This father had knew he had learned the principle from taking the class of receive, retain, release. And it was time for his uh, oldest boy to start learning about the Bible. He was a teenager. And very practical farm family. They were very, very hardworking and very practical people. So after he sent his son to Sunday school to start learning about God and being with a group of believers to study the Bible, when the boy got home, he wanted the boy to tell him what he learned because he understood that if the boy ex tried to explain it to him, that he would understand it better. So he said, what did they teach you at when you went up there to Bible school, son? And the boy said, well, Pap, <clears throat> they taught us about them children from Israel and how uh, they were enslaved under this guy named Pharaoh. And Pharaoh, <clears throat> he, uh, he was really bad with them children from Israel. And this guy named Moses, well, he went in to save the children from Israel. And, and he went and confronted Pharaoh. And after a few things, Pharaoh finally said, all right, get him out of here. And so Moses started leading the children from Israel out of Egypt. And Pharaoh had a change of heart when he was leading these children from Israel out of Egypt. And he's come out to come after them. And they were pinned up against the Red Sea. So Moses and the uh, Hebrews built this big, long bridge over the Red Sea. And all the Hebrews, they ran across the bridge to get over to the other side of the sea. And when they got on the other side, Pharaoh and his army started coming across the bridge. And they chopped the bridge down when they were in the middle of it. And they all fell down in the Red Sea and they died. And the father looked at the son and said, Boy... Is that what they taught you at Sunday school? And he said, no, Daddy, but you sure as hell wouldn't believe it the way they told it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good weekend in the Word. <laughs> That's good. Bob Wasong sent out a joke to the uh, onion peelers, I guess. That was pretty cute about Forrest Gump. Did you get that, Mike? Oh, that was hilarious. That was about the pearly case. Yeah, but see what happens is it's Forrest Gump finally dies, and he gets to the pearly gates, and so he comes up, and St. Peter says to him, Forrest, I got three questions for you, and give me the right answers, and I'll let you in. And he said, first off, there are how many days start with T? Of course, okay, I'll think about that. And then he says, how many seconds are there in a year? So Forrest, okay, I'll think about that. And then he says, what was God's first name? So Forrest goes off, and the next morning he comes up and he says, okay, he's saying, Peter, I got it all figured out. And St. Peter says, okay, the first question was, how many days have a T in them? And Forrest says, oh, that's easy, today and tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and St. Peter says, well, that wasn't exactly what I was thinking of, but we'll, we'll, we can go with that. And then he says, okay, Forrest, how many seconds are there in a year? And Forrest says, 12. And St. Peter, uh, you know, his head's about to explode, and he says, how did you come up with that? He said, well, there's January 2nd, February 2nd, <laughs> March 2nd. <laughs> so St. Peter goes, okay, not what I was thinking of, but we can go with that. And then he says, okay, now this one, this one's the tough one. What is God's first name? And Forrest goes, oh, that's the simplest of all of them. His name is Andy. And St. Peter goes, Andy, how did you get that? And Forrest goes, it's just like in the song. Andy walks with me, Andy talks with me. <laughs> St. Peter opens the gate and he says, run, Forrest, run. <laughs> oh, that's good. 
good. Red for a thread. <laughs> That's great. And there's this guy who went to the doctor's so office, and he's, he's uh, he says, "Doctor, I just feel sore all over. Everything I touch is, I touch my arm, it's sore. I touch my." Knee, it's sore. I touch my neck, it's sore. I touch everything I touch is sore. He says, "What's wrong?" He says, "That's easy. You got a broken finger." (laughs) 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 So, does anybody have anything else? We got big or small. No, sir. Good teaching. Thank you, Don. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I think then I think we should call it an evening. Um, so we'll see y'all next week. Hopefully, be sure to come join us here in the uh, green room afterwards. And good night. Okay. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, night Sandra. Good night.